The headlines are piling up. Claims that Vice President Harris and Democrats, including Gavin Newsom and Jared Polis, are now huddling with their big donors to explore the possibility of running themselves in 2024. Let's bring in Nikki Haley now. She served as the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations and, of course, Governor of South Carolina. It's good to see you again. Oh, nice to see you both. Thank Great you. to have you in the studio. Let's just play a little more of what it was that Kamala Harris said at the NAACP convention the other day. Listen here. We know, NAACP, that our country has a history of claiming ownership over human bodies. We must recognize there are those who are fighting to drag us backward. And today, extremist so-called leaders are criminalizing doctors and punishing women for making health care decisions for themselves. So she didn't come right out and say it, but the inference there was that the Supreme Court decision on abortion is akin to slavery. What do you say? She's outrageous. She's outrageous on everything, whether she compares pro-life um, supporters to trying to stop people voting at the at the polls, whether she talks about this and trying to compare it to slavery, whether she wants to talk about ending the filibuster. She's unbelievably extremist. At the end of the day, Democrats want to take away the voices of the people. The fact that they were okay with an unelected, you know, group of justices deciding our fate was fine as long as it was in their favor. But now suddenly when all the, when the rolling is going to go back to the people and the people are going to decide in their states, suddenly they don't think the people are capable of deciding that, and I think that they are. And so, look, I mean, Kamala continues to mess up everywhere that she can. The one job that she's been given has been the border. She refuses to go there, so she gives us these word salads on things that just don't make sense, and she continues to sound extreme. Well, the, the Democratic pollsters tell us that this is the overturning of Roe v. Wade, an animating issue for their voters uh, ahead of the midterms, also likely to stick around and fire people up ahead of 2024. So it, it is evidence that the vice president is harnessing this issue, making it her own, maybe making it um, a key issue for her going forward as we hear these reports about her and a couple of Democratic governors now exploring presidential bids. What do you say about that? You know, I think they can try and do it, but I'm all over the country helping candidates get elected, House, Senate, and gubernatorial candidates, and it doesn't matter what part of the country you're in. The issues they're talking about is how it costs more money at the gas station, and that's how they get to work. How it costs more money, you know, at the grocery store, and that's how they feed their families. The fact that the border is in chaos, the fact that crimes are high on the street, the fact that their kids lost two years because unions wouldn't let them go back to school. That's what people are talking about. You know, what I see fifth and sixth down the line is abortion and gun control. Right now, people don't have the luxury of politics. What they need to know is that there's people fighting for them and that they're going to go and listen to them and get those things done. I think this is nothing more than them trying to distract to win the midterms, and I don't think it's going to work. Yeah, well, it is a galvanizing issue for members of the Democratic base. There's no question about that. But as you point out, the economy, putting food on the table, that's a top priority for most Americans. So in terms of 2024, we're not going to get to you just yet. We're going to give you a pause on that. Uh, Kamala Harris, uh, Gavin Newsom reaching out to some big money Wall Street donors about a potential run for 2024. When you take a look at Joe Biden's polling numbers in that Siena poll, he is well underwater with every major voting demographic. Do you believe he'll be the nominee in 2024? I mean, look, I don't know who they're going to decide. I would love it if it's Biden. I'd love it if it's Kamala. I'd love it if it's Gavin Newsom, because we can beat them all day long. Bring it. If that's all they've got, bring it. Because at the end of the day, we know what the American people want, and they want freedom, and they want to get government out of the way, and they want to make sure that their dollar is valued, and they want to make sure their kids have a better life and that we've got a strong America that makes it safe abroad. That's what they care about. They don't care about whether our military has pro-gender classes. They don't care about whether you're trying to get our elementary school kids to decide which sex they are. They don't care about the fact that here you're trying to get biological males to run against women. What everybody sees is that's so leftist, so extremist, and they don't identify with it, which is why we're going to get conservative Democrats, we're going to get independents, and we're going to get Republicans. And I think we're going to expand the party with Hispanics, with Asians, with the Jewish community, and with African Americans, because our issues will lead to solutions lifting up everyone, not just a certain segment of people. Could you, Ambassador Haley, beat those candidates in 2024? President Biden, Vice President Harris, 
Gavin Newsom. Well, I mean, you put me on a debate stage with any of them and I would have a field day. I mean, our issues are better. Our solutions are better. And at the end of the day, all you have to do is look at what they've done these last couple of years and see how backwards they have taken our country. What we need is some common sense. We need a fighter and we need somebody that will snap America out of it. We look so distracted right now. Mm -hmm. And when America is distracted, the world is less safe. We've got to snap out of it, get rid of all this cancel culture, get rid of all this woke stuff and start fighting for people and normal people and real people that are just trying to survive. So on that point, you gave a speech to the Christians United for Israel the other day where you were talking about Iran, but you also seem to tease toward 2024. Listen here. No deal is better than a bad deal. And if this president signs any sort of deal, I'll make you a promise. The next president will shred it on her first day in office. Just saying, sometimes it takes a woman. So what are you going to make a decision whether or not you're going to do this? Wait until after the midterms like Tom Cotton or... I mean, look, that was all in fun. Yes. I mean, I think at the end of the day... Truths are often spoken in jest. You no, know, look, I, I think at the end of the day, if Biden gets back into the Iran deal, it would be horrific for America. It would put us in danger. We don't want to talk about the Iran deal. But having said you. that, you know, I mean, look, do I think the first female president that it would be great if it was a strong conservative Republican? Of course I do. And, you know, sometimes does it take a woman? I mean, we've tried men for a while. Maybe a woman's what we need. But I don't think I have to make that decision until the first of next year. Right now, if we don't win in 22, there is no 24. Colin Powell once told me he didn't have the fire in the belly to run for president. Mm. Do you? I think that's probably pretty obvious. I mean, look, I have the fire in the belly for America. I always have. And my parents reminded us every day how blessed we were to live in this country. All I've ever known to do is to fight for her. And so whether I run or not, I'm going to fight for this country until my last breath. It's all I know to do. We'll take it. Maybe we'll take it as a yes. But <laughs> when you do decide, let us know right away. I will. <laughs> we'll take it as a we'll wait and see. Yeah. Thank you. Great to see you. Thanks for Great coming. Great to here. see you again. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.